How's it going guys? In this video we're going to be assembling the upper for our 6.5 Grendel project rifle. Uh, I know that out there on YouTube there's a gajillion videos um, on how to assemble an AR-15 upper and this may be no different. However, um, I've never really brought you guys along on uh, the, the complete step-by-step -step process of building one of the project guns. And I thought I would uh, go through and do that with you in this project because I thought it would be kind of fun. And that way you guys can kind of see what I utilize in putting my uppers together. And uh, maybe you guys can get, uh, gain a few pointers and also maybe give me a few pointers um, in the comments as well. But uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be using uh, for a block is this Nomar block. You can see that I've actually torn the lugs um, out of this block, but um, we're not going to be using it with the lugs anyway, really. So um, what you do is you take your upper and you just place it inside there, just like that. And then there is a top block that goes on top. And then, so it's set up like this. And you just place it in the vise horizontally. So we're going to place it in there, tighten her up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our barrel and we're going to align the pin with the upper receiver, the notch in the upper receiver. We're going to make sure the barrel is seated nice and tight inside the notch. Okay, now once the barrel is set inside the notch nice and tight, you're going to take your barrel nut, and this one is actually included with uh, the Midwest Industries handguard. So we're going to take this barrel nut and we're going to put it in place. hand tighten it down here. All right, now we've hand tightened the barrel nut. And what we're going to do now is we're going to utilize the wrench that also comes with, from Midwest Industries with the handguard. And we're going to torque down the barrel nut. Now, proper torque really is between 30 and 80 foot-pounds of torque. What we're going to do is we're going to start out with a minimum of 30 foot pounds and we're going to see how well the the gas port is aligned with the the notches in the the barrel nut. Hopefully we get pretty close and if not we will apply more torque until the gas port is lined up with the barrel nut. Okay, so I have my torque wrench set to 30 foot pounds of torque. We're going to line up the nut here. We're going to torque it down to 30 pounds. Okay. There's 30 pounds of torque. Now we're going to take the gas tube. Now we're going to take the gas tube and we're going to actually check to see if the port lines up. And it doesn't. It looks like we are one or almost three quarters of a lug off. Okay, so we're going to go up to 50 now and see how well that works. Okay, there's 50. Check our alignment now. We are still way off. So we're going to go up to 60. <laughs> okay, so we've already gone up to 60 and the barrel nut is not, is not uh, aligning. So we're going to go up to 70 here. You can really go up to 80. So if it goes up to 80, then, um, then and it's still not aligned, then I might have to shim the uh, barrel nut to make it actually fit. So, But first we're going to go up to 70 and just see where we're sitting with that. Dang, that's some force there. And that is pretty much right on. So I went back through off camera and just uh, loosened it back up and then retightened it again and I actually got it to line up with just over 75 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it's absolutely perfectly aligned right now. The wiggle back and forth gives us play on equal side. So there it is mounted up and ready to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our gas block and we're going to take our gas tube and we're going to put them together and pin them in place. Alright so we've got our roll pin punch and we're going to line up the gas tube here. Trusty block of duct tape. My favorite block to utilize. Actually, what we're going to do first is I'm just going to get this. I'm going to just get this uh, roll pin started. That's how I like to do it. Typically, 
Typically I like to just give that little pin a whack just to get it started. And then we're going to uh, make sure we're properly aligned here. And give it a couple good whacks. Yep, perfect, perfect alignment. So let's get our roll pin punch here. And there we are, gas tube and gas block is attached. Now we're gonna go ahead and put it on the barrel. All right, so I personally like to take a little bit of oil and just apply it to the inside of the gas block. Just a drop and just kind of work it around inside there. Just so there's less friction on the barrel. Let's bring the barrel back around. Okay, just so there's a little less friction on the barrel, you don't you have a less of a chance of marring up your barrel as well when you do this. And then just kind of work it into place, back and forth. The lube helps as well on that. Okay, good. So there it is, the block is in place now on the barrel. The thing that's cool about the Lilja barrels, and I don't know if you guys can see it in this light, but there's a flat spot on the bottom here that they've actually milled out of the barrel. It allows you to line up the gas port uh, fairly easily, and the set screws uh, on the flat portion doesn't allow the, the uh, gas block to uh, torque at all. So it keeps it in place. Midwest Industries with their with their gas blocks also comes with a little bit of this thread mate. Uh, it is red Loctite. So we're gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this thread mate on the set screws. We don't need a lot, just a little bit here. Okay, there's one. Torque down pretty well there. Okay, and there we are. Gas block is in place and locked down with our threads, our thread locks. All right, next step, we're going to install the Midwest Industries handguard onto it. And all we do now is on the um, the barrel nut, what we're going to do is we're going to just apply some of the uh, sticky the sticky stuff that they supply with the uh, actual handguard. And what it does, it just gives that a little extra sticky or grip on the actual barrel nut. And uh, we're just going to slip it back on place. So let's go ahead and put some of that on there first. First things first, let's go ahead and take the lid off of this. Good. All right, now we're just going to apply a little bit around the, the barrel nut. Take a little bit of plastic here. Just kind of rub it in place here. Okay, good. It smells just like Loctite, so it's got to be something very similar to that. All right, now what we're going to do is we're just going to slip the handguard over top of our barrel. Carefully like. Oh, let's tighten that up. And wiggle it in place. Okay. All right, now we have the uh, the uh, barrel upright now. Okay, now to make sure that our rail is properly lined up, we're gonna take our actual scope mount here and we're going to lock it down in place, making sure that each, that there's a lug on either side. And as we lock that down, it's gonna make sure that the rail is properly aligned with the upper receiver. Now what we're going to do is take our torque screwdriver. We've got it set to, I've got it set to 18 pounds. They say 17, they say 15 pounds, but I like to go a little bit heavier on this. And so we're going to torque it down to about 18 pounds. Okay, there's 18 pounds on that. Again, Midwest Industries says 15 pounds. I like to go a little heavier just because it feels a little bit better to me. All right, so that's about 18 roughly pounds there. All right, so now we'll take our quick detach thing off here again. Okay. All right, guys, there we go. Now the handguard is in place. 
All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Daniel Defense flash hider and we're going to install it on the rifle. I'm going to take our crush washer here. All right, so we've got a crush washer. So we're going to put our crush washer on and then we're going to thread on our muzzle device. The uh, 6.5 Grendel uses a 30 cal muzzle device. So this one is the threads are 5 8 by 24. Okay. Oof, we're going to have to shim that bad boy out, I think. This thing's not going to even come close to lining up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually shim it out a little bit. So I was able to solve the mistiming issue with the flash hider by taking the crush washer here and actually running it over the file. So I just kind of filed it down on either side and I just kept filing it until the timing was almost perfect. So anyway, so that solved the issue there without having to shim it or do anything like that. So there is the uh, Daniel Defense flash hider on the rifle. We're going to be changing out this mil spec trigger with a Rock River National Match two stage. The corner of my <laughs> of my uh, tool bit set here uh, to push the pin. So what I'm going to do is get them started just with the corner here so as to not mar the finish. Then I'm going to use my pin, my punch, to just push it the rest of the way through here. Through and out. And now what I'm going to do is release the tension on that. Pull that out. There's that piece. I'm going to push this the rest of the way through here as well. Okay. Release the tension nice and slow and even. And bring the fire control group out here. All right. All right, there we have it. Just our standard mil spec fire control group. All right, so we have our national match two stage trigger here. We're going to go ahead and put this into position first. Drop the. Oh, got to have it on the fire position. Oop, yep, fire position. Okay. Then we're going to align our holes up and put our first pin in. Pretty simple. Now the hammer we need to put in with the springs backwards to keep tension on it. And then we need to kind of push it into place. here as we position it. All right, there it is. Easy, easy peasy. All right, there it is. Function test. Working just fine. Now we're going to check the safety. We'll cock it back. Check the safety. Safety's working. Function test it again. Okay. And there it is, guys. That is the installation of the Rock River National Match 2 stage. So, the National Match Rock, the Rock River National Match 2 stage trigger is uh, a decent trigger actually. Uh, for the money, it's a really really good trigger. It's about 100 bucks. You can sometimes find them for less than that like uh, I've seen them anywhere from about 70 bucks to 100 bucks. Um, I just bought this one just because um, I didn't want to really have to search around too much. And voila, a scope and scope mount <laughs> magically appear on the rifle. Yeah, um, time and family constraints uh, made it a little bit more difficult to finish the filming of the build. So I kind of just put it into overdrive and got it done real quick. So hopefully you guys will forgive me for not filming uh, the mounting of the scope. I think I've done a video on that in the past, so you guys can check that out. Um, you know, another video that I've mounted a scope on. So. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's complete. The rifle is done. There's only a few minor things I need to do for it. I need to get a bipod adapter, 
uh, for the Harris bipod that I'm going to be putting on this. Uh, get a sling and scope caps, which are really important, especially being that this is going to be a hunting rifle. So. Yeah, so, uh, but other than that, it's done. And some of you guys are going to see the similarities to the last Project Gun that we did, which is the Project SPR 2.0, uh, mainly because it's just me, guys. This is the this is the type of rifle that I, that I enjoy, that I like. And so, yeah, there's going to be similarities because that's what I dig. So, and I think the rifle turned out awesome. Now, as you see it here, I've actually shot this rifle. I've um, put rounds through it. Um, just to break the barrel in and to um, do some chronographing. That's it. I didn't even shoot it on paper. I just kind of shot it through the chronograph uh, and uh, did a lot of cleaning in between my shots to break my barrel in. And so, um, more, mostly just industrial shooting. So we are going to be getting out very, very soon to stretch its legs, do some group shoots with it, as well as uh, see if I can get it out. And just I want to just take the sucker right out to a thousand. I want to just get the load dialed in and just start doing some long range action with this bad boy. So I want to see what this Grendel will do. So uh, so look forward to that. Stay tuned for it. But I think this rifle just turned out awesome. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments about anything that you've seen in this video, uh, feel free to leave them down below. And don't forget to like the video, uh, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more uh, videos on this rifle as well as future projects. And as always, guys, thanks very, very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.